Here we will be discussing the general reactions of carboxylic acids and its derivatives as well as a little information with regards to their relative reactivities. First, we must clarify that this is going to be our working formula for all the functional groups that will be included and this has the format RC double bond OL where in L is the variable part wherein depending on what L is we get a different type of organic compound. If my L is an OH then I have a carboxylic acid because it's RCOOH. If I have RCOOR that is an ester. If I have RCOOC double bond OR that is an anhydride. If I have an RCOX, then that is an acyl halide. And if I have RCONH2, then that is an amide. Okay? Normally, all of the examples here are called carboxylic acid derivatives because they are structurally related to carboxylic acids. In what way? The fact that if you look at all of these functional groups, OH, OR, OCOR, X, N. Once again, I'm going to ask this question, what's similar about oxygen, halogens, and nitrogen? The fact that in the periodic table, they are on the right, they are electronegative, right? And because they are electronegative, they kind of pull electrons towards them, and carbon is, in the first place, already being kind of tortured by this oxygen up top, the fact that oxygen is also pulling electrons towards it. So oxygen here is partially negative already because it's electronegative. Then our carbonyl carbon is obviously partial positive at this state. And then the fact that this L is pulling electrons further is as if, you know, the more electronegative, the more they're kind of, hey, give me my electrons. I want those electrons. I'm electronegative. They're bound to leave when they have the chance, such that, for example, I know my carbon here is partially positive. It's electron poor, it's electrophilic. Once a nucleophile targets my carbon, the L here gets a reason or an excuse to get these bonds and like, oh, these are really mine now. I'm gonna go ahead. And they go away. And that's why, remember, we call things like these, L stands for leaving groups. Because apparently, what actually differentiates our different carboxylic acid derivatives are only their leaving groups. And from the name leaving group, their role is to go away once the nucleophile gets in. So what would be the final product after that? R, C double bond O, and then in place of the leaving group which has already left, the nucleophile. So the nucleophile has replaced or substituted for the leaving group. That's why it's a substitution reaction. And then nucleophile, right? So nucleophilic substitution. Now there's a little problem here. When you were discussing substituted alkanes way back, hope this loads. It's not loading properly. Yeah. When we were discussing substituted alkanes before, the mechanism is also SN, nucleophilic substitution applied to an sp3 carbon. So now, what we can do to differentiate this one, because it's also Sn, but this time, my carbon here, it's a double bond here, right, is sp2, is to just acknowledge that this is the Sn of carboxylic acids, so we use the word acyl. So the complete mechanism of the reactions that we will see on this screen is called nucleophilic acyl substitution. Okay? And it's easy. You just need to know what to put here and you're just going to erase this and you're done. Before we do that, I just want to give a summary on the relative reactivities of the derivatives. Remember what I told you a while ago that the leaving group is going to depend, I mean the power of the leaving group or its willingness to leave depends on how hungry it is for electrons. The analogy a while ago, like Hey, I want my electron, something like that. So now let's examine. So we know very well that there is difference in the electronegativity between or among halogens, oxygens, and nitrogens. If I'm going to ask you, halogen versus oxygen versus nitrogen, 
which is the most hungry for electrons, which is the most electronegative. Of course, you should answer the one at the rightmost part of the periodic table, the halogens. And therefore, since they are the most electron hungry, they're the ones who are really most willing to leave. That makes them the best leaving groups. Therefore, they're the most reactive. I'm trying to say, acyl halides are the most reactive of all here in this list. In contrast, nitrogens are the least electronegative of the bunch, right? And meaning, they're the least willing, so that makes amides the least reactive of the bunch. The oxygens are somewhere in the middle between nitrogen and halogen, so the, it's, it's reasonable to find them here. In fact, in textbooks, you will find that carboxylic acids and esters are almost of equal reactivity. But anhydrides are one step higher because the fact that I have my oxygen here. It's catering its lone pairs to this carbonyl group here, but it's also catering to the other carbonyl group beside it. The fact that there's competition for these electrons means that compared to a normal oxygen, which is just willing to give it all uh, uh, in, 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 how should I say it? It's willing to give it all out for this single carbonyl group. For here, it's kind of conflicted. And that conflict will allow us to imagine that maybe this is going to be more unstable and more willing to break apart. That's going to make our anhydrides more reactive than your usual OH or OR. So that explains the decreasing reactivity as this list says. Now let's go to the individual reactions. So I'm just using the general format L. And remember this, normally what we will see is that one of the hydrogens in our reagents will have to join the leaving group to make the leaving group really leave. I'll justify that later. The one that does not follow what I just said is SOCl2. SOCl2 is called thionyl chloride. We have actually seen this already before in the SN reactions of uh, alkyl halides and alcohols. And all we need to do here is to erase the L here and replace it with a Cl, and we're done. So the product here is an acyl chloride. No special name of the reaction. We're done. Now, if I use ammonia, this is what I was talking about, you're going to have to get out one of the hydrogens here, which will join the HL, I mean, which will join the leaving group, so that will be HL, and that will be removed as HL. So this is what we will get out, and then this will be the one which we will attach here, giving us this product, which is, of course, an amide. So this is called ammonolysis, as far as the reaction goes, because lysis, first of all, we separated the LH from the RCO, so that's somehow breaking, right? And what did we use to break it? Ammonia, right? NH3. I'm just also trying to say, on top of this, if you do use an amine, this is possible. If you do that, same thing. One of the H's will be used as sacrifice. And then this will go out, again, as HL. And then the remaining RNH will be attached like so. But since you use an amine this time, you don't call it ammonolysis, you call this aminolysis. Just a minor change in the name, but uh, nevertheless something that I think is worthy of mention. If you do use an alcohol like ROH, just like for ammonia or amines, you're going to sacrifice this H to get this leaving group out. So we're going to get this out, and then what we're going to attach is only the OR. Remember, the nucleophile is the electron-rich part, so it should be oxygen first. And this is our final product. If I add an alcohol, RCOOR, what's this? This is an ester, right? And you can call this reaction with two names, or using two names. First, you can call this alcoholysis because you, once again, remove this from this. But what you use this time was ROH, which is an alcohol. So the word alcoholysis makes sense. Or the fact that your final product is an ester means you can also call this reaction esterification. Usually for esterification, our acyl material here is a carboxylic acid, really. And then you add an alcohol, and then you get an ester. That's a classic reaction that you will see a lot if you do get your biochemistry course. Okay, moving forward, 
we can this time use water as the reagent wherein we follow the same old pattern. One of the hydrogens will go to the leaving group which will force the leaving group out as HL. Usually this will happen on anything that is not a carboxylic acid, particularly esters or amides, wherein the remaining part, uh, OH, the O will attach to the carbon or carbon and the product would look like this. Obviously, we do know that RCOOH is the general format for a carboxylic acid, and so that is usually the final product in this reaction. The name of this reaction, since you used water as a reagent, water, hydra, right? Hydro. And then we use the same suffix that we've been using for the last two reactions, lysis. So by the use of water, you can perform hydrolysis to convert any carboxylic acid derivative back to a carboxylic acid. Usually, in medical or health science context, the derivatives that we primarily see being hydrolyzed are esters and amides, as you will see when you get to your biochemistry course. One more common SNA-SO reaction is the use of a base, like sodium hydroxide, wherein, just like the last few reactions, we can use the hydrogen here to force our leaving group out as HL, then the remaining part here will act as the nucleophile, particularly the oxygen of NaO, and so if we attach it, it will look like this. Now, if you think about it, usually if, if uh, this happens, what we start with is a carboxylic acid, RCOOH. So imagine you used an acid in a base. Isn't that what you usually call a neutralization reaction? Now think about it. If I have a carboxylic acid, RC double bond OOH, and then I did say a while ago that the H from NaOH will go to this leaving group and the leaving group will go out. So what really left in the first place? What's this HL? HOH, right? If this HOH is this one, then that means by neutralization, one of our products is water. And that makes sense, right? Because if you're familiar with neutralization from general chemistry, one of the products really is water. What is the other product? Hopefully you remember that other than water, one of the two products also is called the salt. And therefore, this is the salt. But this time, we don't call this just the salt. The salt here is called the salt. And usually, the carboxylic acids that we use are called fatty acids, which we will learn about more in your biochemistry. In particular, we don't just call this particular reaction as a neutralization reaction. It is better to call this in organic chemistry as saponification, with respect to the fact that your final product is literally called soap. Yes, the soap that we use to wash our hands and our bodies. Of course, there are additional reactions that are not discussed here, but I want to believe that in most entry-level textbooks for organic chemistry, these five are the most commonly mentioned. And thus, this would be our end for discussion of SNA cell reactions, and any more advanced reactions may follow sometime soon.